Welcome to the presentation of Nemec Exia and DC Tools, a design approach for reinforced concrete buildings according to the ACI 318. This proposal outlines a very clear flowchart for the structural engineer, which starts by preparing the FAIR model and executing the linear elastic static or dynamic analysis into C engineer, proceeding into the application of all the code requirements of ACI 318 for reinforced concrete buildings into EC tools and finally verifying all the analysis and design with pushover analysis according to the FEMA 356 requirements using a specially developed dedicated seismostruct engine using fiber element analysis. For this presentation we will start by having a very simple three-story building with one basement as seen in the view in front of you. First, we are going to start by outlining the requirements of the FEA model so that it is compatible with all the code checks applied within EC tools. These requirements are very clearly outlined in paragraph 2.3 of the ACI user manual of EC tools. Firstly, the project must be in IBC mode so that all the uh, requirements of the IBC are available to the user. So in the project we select IBC mode instead of Eurocodes. Then we have to define the load cases required by the code. The ACI 318 ideally requires this number of load cases. Apart from the self-weight which is auto calculated automatically by the software, we have the applied dead load, the applied live load, the reduced roof live load, the snow load, the rain load, the wind loads, and the earthquake excitation in the X and Y direction. Finally, we have eccentricity loads due to earthquake in the X and Y direction as defined by the code. Also, we need to define the following combination, which is the mass combination, showing the active mass during an earthquake excitation. We are also able to define additional combinations such as the gravity or here or the dead which are ideally not required uh, in EC tools as EC tools creates automatically all the design combinations required by the code. The user can obviously define additional load combinations which should be linear in C engineer and these are treated as seismic or non-seismic depending on the user decision as we will see later on. After all this we go and explain how the model the basic modeling parameters. The basic modeling parameters are that all plates slabs should be defined as 2D members plate element number 90. All columns should be defined as column 100 elements. The beams can be either defined as beam elements or rib sections if we have a T-beam section under a slab. For here, for example, we have T-beams. Finally, walls are defined as wall 80 elements. And not cell. If they are defined as cell, they are ignored by the design process. We see that this building which is a three-story building with one basement, has been described starting from level zero for the bottom of the ground floor, which is important for the following steps of the design process, meaning the geometry of the building should correspond to its actual condition. Secondly, this building has three types of walls. It has one rectangular wall, seen here on the right, it has one L-shaped core seen here on the left and finally has a C-shaped core as seen in front of your screen. Following all these explanations and many more which can be found in the user manual, we go and execute the calculation which for this building has already been executed. Following the execution of the calculation, we go and view the results. For example, we will see the deformed structure due to earthquake in the, y in the x direction, where we see the deformed shape of the building.
and also we can see section forces, etc. Following the verification of the analysis results, we go to Plugins, Easy Tools, where we call the Easy Tools toolbar. We can either recreate the results file or, if we haven't changed anything, we can use the existing one. To save time, we do not recreate the results file. And we call it Easy Tools. We go to ACI Design and to Run Design. In To Run Design, we have the several design options that are being defined. First of all, we can have seismic design or non-seismic design. When we include seismic design, several options are activated, while if we don't have seismic design, these are deactivated. We have the design spectra acceleration, we have the risk category, important factor, seismic design category, the structural system type, we have the ductility classes, we have to, the possibility to override the redundancy factor R. We have an overstrength factor, which is defined as 2.5. We can override if we have structural irregularity. We can override if we have vertical structural irregularity. Uh, we can define the response modification coefficient, the deflection amplification factor. We also define the foundation level, which is ideally uh, in our example at zero. Obviously, if we have a basement floor but not surrounding earth all around or a basement reinforced concrete uh, box of walls, then the basement level could be minus three, for example, in our case. Concrete cover in inches and the default strength of reinforcing steel, the yield strength, and we also saw the yield strength class as defined in the engineer and we also define the value of shear strength yield shear strength of steel following that we can also define the allowable rebar sizes for beams columns and walls and we can proceed to the application of the ACI design to this reinforced concrete building An intermediate table comes up which shows the data as interpreted by EC tools where we have the materials which we have a reinforced concrete material, only one here, obviously we could have more. We have sections which we have the column section, the beam section and the core sections or wall sections that are being automatically detected and defined by EC tools for many types of walls such as rectangular, L-shaped, T-shaped, C-shaped, Z-shaped and S-shaped. EC Tools also has the opportunity to define arbitrary wall sections which have however to be defined by the user in geometry. Then we have the assignment of beams, columns and wall sections and local axis angles and we proceed to the next table which assigns the load cases to its type. So we have dead load, live load, roof load, snow load, rain load, wind load, the self weight, the mass which is the mass combination, the seismic in the x and the y direction, the eccentricities and two equivalent static load cases which are actually the self weight in the x and y direction used in order to define elastically, statically the percentage of shear, base shear of each story of the walls compared to the total shear of the story. Following that we go to the actual design. Before proceeding the software asks us how to treat the combinations created in C engineer which can be not designed at all, designed as non-seismic or designed as seismic. We select the gravity combination to be designed as non-seismic although the same combination will be created by the software itself by the automatic creation of combinations. Now we see the biaxial, axial force, bi biaxial moment, axial force design of columns, walls and beam executed very quickly. Here we have the design results where we see the design spectra response acceleration, the risk category, all the parameters taken into account into the design. 
we see the general checks such as the story drift elastic stability coefficients we see the combinations to be designed and then we go to the beam design where each beam is designed at six locations left, right, center, bottom and top and for each location we have the minimum code required reinforcement, the maximum allowed reinforcement, the calculated reinforcement which results actually from the axial force and moment of these combinations. Here we see the action section forces that corresponds to the most severe design combination per location and we have the required reinforcement which is the minimum from the calculated and the minimum the maximum of the calculated and the minimum and the suggested rebar sizes. We have then the sear design for uh, seismic and non-seismic actions where we have the action, we have the concrete contribution and the rebar's contribution we see here, for example, that the concrete contribution in the seismic actions is reduced. The same design we have for columns, where we have a design at two locations, bottom and top. Proportionally to the beams, we have minimum required reinforcement, maximum allowable reinforcement, calculated reinforcement from the section forces by axial moment and axial force for this combination, and the same for shear. If we double click in, on a column, we actually open the news section analysis, which is part of VC Tools, and shows the section analysis and the safety factor for the bottom and top of each column according to the combination that has been designed. We see here, for example, for the bottom, we have the section forces of the combination that is being designed. We see here, when we revert to US units. Finally, walls. Walls are designed at two levels. We have the wall edge elements, which are the confined elements that have the flexural design of the wall, the flexural capacity of the wall, and we have the webs, which are designed for shear. We have the following reinforcement for the edge elements as for the columns and we also have the shear reinforcement for the legs. If we open its wall, if we double click its wall, it opens into NUS software where we see the flexural design of this wall for the specific combination that it has been designed. This actually creates the confidence to the structure engineer that these very key elements, the reinforced concrete walls and cores, are correctly dimensioned, proportioned. Following all this, we proceed to the pushover verification. For the pushover verification, we double click on the pushover link and we select the number of load cases that we want to apply. Ideally, FEMA 356 requires eight load cases, meaning uh, four according to the mass proportion and uh, four according to the eigen modes, eigen shapes. However, for the brevity of this presentation, we're only going to execute one load case. The reference node is automatically selected by the software code to be the top story, most close to center mass center node. For example, in our example, this node is N192, as we see here. Obviously, the user may alter that. We have a target displacement in inches, which is 3 inches here. We have the displacement tolerance, the rotation tolerance, and we go to execute the pushover static nonlinear analysis. The pushover static nonlinear analysis, as mentioned previously, uses a seismic tract engine, starts from the dead load application, and then applies in a stepwise fashion 
and increased lateral load or lateral displacement which is uh, using a fiber element mode for the nonlinear behavior of beams, columns and walls. Following the completion of the pushover analysis, the software plots the pushover curve which is seen here and which can also be saved the data into the analysis, the design report. It should be noted that the pushover data allows the performance-based design or verification of a building and also follows all the requirements of FEMA 356. This concludes this very short presentation. Thank you very much for your attention.